let's get more on the global drone market with Jonathan Ruprecht, live from Fort Lauderdale, Florida. He's a commercial pilot and flight instructor and also a lawyer who specializes in commercial drone law. Jonathan, thanks for joining us. Thank you so much for having me. Jonathan, drones for delivery big in China. JD.com, one of the largest online retailers in China, launched its drone delivery service to rural areas. But drone delivery in the U.S. is being held back by FAA regulation. The rule stating that a drone's pilot must be able to see the drone at all times. Why is this such a big concern? Uh, two big concerns there is that the uh, for operations beyond visual line of sight, the FAA is treating it in a kind of a worst case scenario with analyzing the operations over people. Those standards have not been created yet. They're still working towards that with the proposed micro drone rule that they were asking about just recently. Also, the other problem here is not just the operations over people, but it is the sensing and avoiding other aircraft in the air. That's the big concern for the, F, uh, for the FAA. So there currently is ground-based technology that's getting bit developed right now, as well as technology to place on board the aircraft. Those standards have not been finalized yet. So currently, we're going to have to do the Part 107 process with waivers. That's the only way we're going to be able to do the on visual line of sight. But that does not include package delivery, unfortunately. All right, well, Jonathan, uh, drone manufacturers and software providers are developing technologies like geofencing and collision avoidance that will make flying drones safer and more FAA friendly. How do those work? Geofencing is going to be primarily located on the aircraft, and that's going to be determining, there's going to be a map, and it's also going to be picking up a GPS signal, and then it's going to determine its relationship with an onboard map of certain no-fly zones. Uh, the downside to that is you can prevent the GPS signal from being uh, picked up, uh, but then they have to come up with counters to that. So people have to constantly keep checking back in. That's so that's primarily geofencing for the uh, recreational uh, uh, individuals. That's one way they can uh, keep them in check. For sensing and avoiding aircraft, that technology is currently being developed in a lot of uh, in universities and stuff right now, but it hasn't been actually put out to market. Uh, some of this stuff can be tested out doing the waiver process uh, under 107. If that works out, then they could scale it out to possibly drone delivery. Well, right now in the U.S., the regulations have limited commercial drones to just a few industries and applications like aerial surveying and mining and agriculture, for example. How do you see that expanding? I see it getting expanded more for just in, in, in depth more of those that niches. So the inspections are going to be much more prevalent now with better sensors. The technology is developing at a far rapid, a far rapid pace than most of us uh, would have thought. The sensors are becoming smaller to, it, to meet the payload requirements, I guess, what the, that the drone can actually do, and that they're actually gathering far more data. That's also creating another interesting situation here. Of how do you actually manage this amount of data, this, the constantly coming in? How do you flag certain things? ensuring people's privacy rights or not getting yourself sued and sued by uh, uh, individuals that are you know overly concerned with their privacy well I don't know about overly concerned I can definitely see why you would be concerned with drones uh, and cameras flying up above you at any time uh, but Jonathan let's take it back to regulations because the FAA fairly late to the game how have other countries been in terms of uh, incorporating drones both in government work and private businesses uh, yes uh, the Japanese government uh, they actually started integrating drones in allowing them into the national airspace in Japan there back in around the early 1990s and so the FAA is somewhat late to the game Italy Canada Australia United Kingdom have all started creating drone regulations but even though the FAA is late to the game here, their regulations are actually far less restrictive than in other countries. For example, Italy requires you to have a million dollars of liability insurance to actually fly the drone. However, the FAA does not require that of individuals flying drones here in the United States, at least under the, the, the regulations that will be going into effect shortly. Million dollars insurance policy, yeah, that's going to deter some people. Let's talk about the drone manufacturers. How are they trying to differentiate their offerings uh, with different hardware and software components 
who's really leading the game here? Uh, DJI is uh, leading in large amounts uh, the U.S. market primarily, developing a lot of these, if you will, prosumer drones that are uh, capable enough to do a lot of the commercial jobs. Uh, and so a lot of people are flying that those same rigs recreationally, and they're switching them over and flying them also commercially. Uh, so that's, that, that's an interesting uh, creation set right there. Unique is also another company. It's a Chinese-based company as well that's got in, into the market more so as well. And they're starting to gobble up more uh, uh, market share, and it's becoming interesting now because as the prices are going down, then there's more and more focus on the accessories, better camera, better flight times, better batteries, and better service. All right. Thanks so much for that overview. Jonathan Ruprecht, commercial pilot and flight instructor and aviation legal specialist.